That's where the various inference algorithms come into play. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of these. I'm not going to go into the details of these, but you know, there are two well-known algorithms, W and M. They are basically the same thing. The basic idea between both is that when you, you, know, you don't immediately assign types to terms, you assign a type schema which has some meta type variables inside and then later on you either uh, collect a substitution so this would be something that bubbles up or you push down a sorry no you, you, okay so the substitution bubbles up and either you get a type of some sub term and, and a substitution which you then need to apply to everything else or you prescribe a type and you get back a substitution such that if you apply that to everything, including the type of or then you will get the type of this subterm and also everything else. And this is the crux of the issue that I want to talk about, which is these are not compositional algorithms in the sense that it's not true that you can take, you can, you can look at a sub expression and meaningfully talk about the type of that sub expression in such a way that the type of the expression that contains it will only depend on the types of the sub expression, right? There is there is a uh, it's linear because there is a there's an ordering in, in how you need to to uh, refer them to your sub terms because the you, you need to, to process one subterm and you need to use that result to process the next subterm. So that's an example. Suppose that I have an application, right? So this is a function application of E on F. If I just look at W, I mean I could have picked that myself. It really doesn't matter. If I, I, I don't know why this stopped working. Uh, why this is So suppose you have a function application. Uh, if you look at the rules, what it says is that you are given, come on, let me enter this. So you, if you look at the rules, the first one says that you know, we get some substitution 
get some substitution, which we then pass to the type inference of the, of the first subterm, and then we get back a, oh, sorry, then we get, sorry, sorry. We pass in, of course, uh, we pass in the context to, to infer the type of the first subterm, and we get back a substitution. And then we, when we do the inference on the second subterm, instead of passing the original uh, environment, we pass in the environment with the substitution already applied. We have to do this because this is the only way that the, these two can communicate, right? And as we will see in, in, in the next slide, it's very easy to make up an example where they need to communicate in the sense that you have something inside this term and you have something inside this term and each of them are on their own well tied, but they will not agree with each other and the, the full application is not well tied. So, of course, you can do this the other way around, right? I can flip the whole thing. I can start from the original environment, pass it to traversing F, I get back a substitution, I apply that, and I pass that to E. Both of these are equally valid, but both of them like break a kind of symmetry. So here's an example which shows that why this is a problem. So let's look at this example, right? Suppose I have is just in scope with type maybe a to bool, and I have not in scope with type bool to bool, and I say that foo of x is a pair, a pair constructor applied on is just x and not x. So what is the type of foo, or what do I get if I try to type check foo? Any guesses? Like what, 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 what do you guys think the type of foo is or should be? Whether x is maybe a from foo. Right. So what is not well typed here? The x <laughs> Which x? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so, so suppose that you, you pass this program to GHC. So GHC will tell you that bool and maybe a doesn't agree in the first argument of not. So it says that the first argument of not here, this x uh, has type maybe a, but it should have type bool, right? Which sounds reasonable until you think about it and you realize that, <laughs> like, why? Well, why this? It, it's not true that you know, not the x on its own should be well typed. And, okay, so you think maybe I can use hubs, which is another Haskell, in, uh, which is a Haskell interpreter only, I think. Anyway, another Haskell type checker. Maybe that's more helpful. Okay, so you pass it to hubs, and then hubs says, well, it's just x is not well typed, <laughs> because x is a bool. And then, you know, so, so, so where is the error, right? Have you tried helium? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I haven't. Well, that's a, probably a good idea. But the point here is that the only reason that you get, you know, seemingly conflicting error messages. Yeah, exactly, it's because one of these type checkers goes this way, the other one goes that way. And each of them are right, but from the user's point of view, it's not helpful because it's, you know, the expression <coughs> not x doesn't have any problem. The, it, you know, is just x also doesn't have any problem. So, so, so you know, where is the problem? And the whole point of a compositional type system is that it does have this property that if you want to type check a term, you type check the subterms independently of each other, you get back something from each of them, and then you look at those sub results, and they, you know, plus of course the, the term, it's like the structure of the term itself, determines the type of the larger term. So, so let's look at that. Let, let's look at what a compositional type system would look like for Indonesia. So the first thing we need to, to see is that if you imagine, it, okay, if you think of a type checker or a type inferrer, as you say, like as something that looks at a term and gives you a type, that's not gonna work for a compositional thing because like in this example, right? Suppose that I go down to is just x, you know, it will have type bool. Suppose I go down to not x, it would have type bool. 
So I get a pair of woo woo, but that doesn't work. It doesn't give me enough information. It doesn't tell me what X should be. Like even if it was valid type, it would not be enough because I need to know what the inferred type of X is. So as we see in this example, the the we need something which tracks more intermediate results than just a type. Right? So in this example, we want to know something about x from the type of is just x, and we want to know something about x from the type of not x. So the type of is just x is bool, the type of not x is bool. It doesn't tell us enough. So you know, what we want to, to detect is that is just x is a bool, but also it's, it's not a bool on its own, it's, it's a bool if x is type maybe a. And not x is a bool if x is type bool. And then when we put these two together, here we will get a conflict, right? So what we want to see is that the, the error message should come from the top roof level, and it should tell us that this sub-expression on its own is okay, this sub-expression on its own is okay, it's only the, the application of one on the other is what is not okay. So, so the, the idea is that instead of just types, we assign so-called typing to subterms, where a typing is simply a type in a context of monomorphic variables. So when I say monomorphic, of course, I mean it can still have variables, ty type variables, but notice yeah, this is not for all a maybe a. We'll see how that all works out. It says x is maybe a, but for a, it's a, for a, for a meta variable a. So the a is fixed, so the a is fixed in the same sense as an existentially bound type variable is fixed. So it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a Schwann variable of, yeah. it's, it's a meta variable, right? So we, we're not yet at the two level. Yeah, right. we, we, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that works. In the basically in the in the, the full level, you want the x disappear because on the full level, you know, who's type should not depend on x because who's type should be a, is a function from something to something. The fact that it even has a variable named x should not leak out. So here is the derivation rules for a compositional type system. And hopefully you will see why it's compositional. Okay, this thing is this for you. have these typings for subterms, that also means that variables, polymorphic variables, will carry a typing instead of just a type. So in, in gamma, in, in, in the environment, we will have we will have typings, right? And then if I see an occurrence of a variable, I will say that the typing of that occurrence is the typing of the variable uh, refreshed. So refreshing here means that I take the typing and I replace all these type meta variables with fresh ones in a consistent way. So all the A's become A primes, all the B's become B primes, right? But they are still, uh, they're still meta variables. They are still not Know, for all bound, and this is not so. Yeah, you know, notice how I wrote equals and not member of, like in the indeterminate case. In the indeterminate case, the type instantiation is a non-deterministic operation, right? Because you take a type which has a universally bound type variables and you replace each of them with the type that I don't know the oracle tells you, or you know. But here, you just mechanically make 
enough fresh type variables such that you can replace A with A prime, B with B prime, and so on. So there's no non-determinism here. Uh, if you have an application, okay, that's the simplest, right? I just take the uh, type names of F and E, and what I do is that I say, okay, the, the typing of the application is some unification of the two monomorphic environments to see what that means. And of course, the two types have to be, like P1 has to be equal to P2 to A, right? Where A is a fresh meta variable. And then if, if we unify this with this and this with this, we get a monomorphic environment, which is like the union of all the, so in this case, the, two, the union of these two, these two monomorphic environments. So anyway, if one of them says that the type of X should be A, and the other one says that the type of Y should be B, then you get both X and Y in this unified environment. And what if you have a conflict? Well, that's why it's called a uni unifier. It's not just a union. So in that case, we unify the, all the types that the different monomorphic environments contain for the same variable, right? So if you have x of type maybe A here, and you have, let's say, x of type maybe in here, then you can unify them and you get x of type maybe A. Oh, sorry, maybe in. And of course, that also means if you have anything else which mentions A, then the A is replaced with in. If you have x of type int and x of type maybe a, then this is the step where you get an error, right? This, this unification. So we will see what that looks like in, in practice for the is just slash not example. And then for a lambda abstraction, we introduce x into the environment. So we need to come up with a typing for x. So what is the typing of x going to be? So it's my put string, but it says that if the type, in the, in the context, in the monomorphic context where the type of x is a, it has type a. This sounds like a tautology, right? But when you think about it, that's exactly what it will mean for a variable to be monomorphic, because it will say that it has exactly the type that its type is. So if you contrast this, I hope the next, yeah, okay. If you contrast this with let, in let, when we go into the body, which is here, we say that x, instead of having the, ty you know, the, the typing that came out of the definition, we remove x from that monomorphic environment. So when you make something polymorphic, when you do the let generalization, it corresponds exactly to removing the thing from its own context. And the reason that will work, and I think, yeah, okay, I, I, I have some, some, some more examples of that. So, so why, why does this work, right? Because the thing is, you can look at these rules and you can convince yourself that application makes sense, you know, lambda makes sense on its own. You can convince yourself that variable occurrences make sense. This one might look a bit surprising, like, why, why do I pass x the same way as I pass it to a lambda when I want to type check the definition, but then when I want to type check the body, it gets a different environment. Why, why, why is that? So this makes sense, right? Because of course, if you believe the lambda rule, that if, if you think that that makes sense, then of course you will want to use the same for let because in, in a recursive let, binding, you still want the recursion to be monomorphic, right? But then when you want to use it in the body, you want to make it polymorphic. And, and, and when you think about it, the, the, the whole value of the individual type system is less polymorphism, right? Otherwise, you could just really just use FCLC and not get too far. Um, so, so, so why does this, what does this even have to do with individual, right? Turns out that this type system agrees with the Hindu-Linear type system for the type, for well-type programs, the type, the Hindu-Linear type of a top-level uh, term is going to be the same 
as the time part of the typing that we get with this system and the monomorphic environment will be empty. I mean, of course it's going to be empty, right? Because the only way to introduce, to add something to uh, the typing is you know, here in lambda and in let, right? Because here we extend gamma and here we extend gamma, right? But then if you look at the look at the, the rules for the, the result, you will see that both here the monomorphic environment excludes x and also here the well, this here is more direct, right? Because that's all we do with it, we just drop x. And again, this makes intuitive sense because it corresponds to the fact that the type or the typing of a lambda abstraction should contain all you need to know about its parameter in the type, right? Like, even the fact that it's called x should not be visible from the outside, right? Lambda x to x and lambda y to y should have the same typing because they're indistinguishable. I mean, they are just enough uh, renaming away anyway, right? The type should not know anything about the choice of internal names. So if, if you if you follow this to its conclusion, then that means the top level terms must have empty monomorphic environments. So their typing is, is just a type because it's an empty uh, monomorphic environment and a type. And then those types will correspond to the types you get with the Hindemann type checker. Of course, in such a way that all the type variables are for all bound, right? Like you need to write the for all by hand that for the top level of things. So the why, so why, why, why is this polymorphic? Why, what does this have to do with him? So it turns out that if you look at the, the rule for a variable occurrence here, right, that rule says that you know, we take whatever monomorphic context X has in gamma and we refresh that. So there are two cases possible here, either delta contains x or it doesn't. If it contains x, that means when I refresh the typing, then I'm going to refresh the right-hand side and the left-hand side together. So if x occurs here, right, and then you know, it, it, it will have the same thing on the right side. If I, if I refresh this, then all I get is that you know, this, this will turn from x at a then a to x has type b then b or x has type c then c. But of course, all of these mean the same thing. As soon as I unify two of these, as soon as I unify, you know, x has type a, if x has type a then a, and if x has type b then b, when I unify these, a and b will need to be unified. So, and that's, that's what makes it monomorphic, right? Because a monomorphic variable is something that has to have the exact same type everywhere, right? But if you, if you end up unifying all the occurrences of, a, of, the, vari of the type of the, of the variable, I mean, if, if you end up unifying all the, the types of all the occurrences of the variable, right? Then that means you regard it as monomorphic. Because anyway, if all the use sites are unified, that means they all have to agree on the time. So does that make sense? So I, because I, I, I'm seeing that the, the screen is going back, so don't hesitate to, to, to ask if any stuff is not. Yep. I can't comment on that because I haven't looked into generalizing that to, to rank two. But, but this doesn't push, okay, but, but this doesn't push the, the variable types down, right? Because all of these rules, they just collect. So 
this is completely the same type driven and this is completely uh, bottom up, right? Because all of the rules uh, say that whatever typing you get out of the uh, out of the, the subterms, right? So you, know, you get this here, you get um, this here, you get this here, you get this here. All of these are just things that bubble up. And all we do is we unify and we drop some variables to get the typing of the result, but we never push anything down. Maybe we can't, right? Because if we, if we were to push down, then we would be back to, to square one. Because if you wanted to push anything down from you know, the, the previous sibling of the subterm into the next sibling, then you would have the same linearity. So, so in all of these rules, and, and th th that's what makes it oh, right. I, I, I might not have said this point. So, in contrast to the nonlinear type system, these are syntax uh, directive rules. Precisely because all of them look like I just take whatever typing falls out of the subterm to come up with the typing of the term. So, and, and everything is deterministic. Okay, so, so if you have x in the context of itself, then that means everywhere where x occurs, they will have different meta variables, but they will ultimately be unified at, you know, at, at, the, at the level where they meet, right? So, so the worst case, like the x at the thickest of the tree, but that, yes. that, that will cause a lot of com like computation. Um, so, so in that case, I mean, okay. Um, okay, we, we're still going to, because of course, I want to show you the same example with these just and the not you know, what it gives you with this system. So in, in that case, what happens is that, yes, it really, so, so it becomes the, the top level expression becomes the one where you get the type error, right? But it will tell you exactly which two subterms. I mean, it will not tell you these two subterms. It will tell you these two subterms that on its own, this one is okay. On its own, this one is okay. And it is true, so that's the thing. When it tells you that you have an error here, it really is true that you could just cut this, yeah. put it in a top level thing, and it would be well typed. You could cut the other one, and that would be well typed as well. Yeah. Right? So, okay, but what about lab polymorphism? So, so we've seen, I, I hope I've convinced you that monomorphic variables are correctly tracked by this system. So, what about polymorphism? So, if you look at lab, when we go into the body, we drop x from the monomorphic environment of x. So whatever typing falls out of the definition of x, it might or it might not contain x. Can anyone tell me what it depends on whether the monomorphic environment of the definition will contain x or not? Exactly, exactly. So if x is recursive, because then uh, this rule will introduce the environment of x into the environment of the definition. And as we see here, we, we, we add x as a monomorphic variable. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So you have two cases. If, if the definition of x is not recursive, then x is not going to be in, in this delta 0. If it is recursive, then it is going to be in delta zero. And we use that fact because we say that that type has to be equal to the type of the definition. So you know, we, we only allow for monomorphic recursion. Right? So, if, so, so you, you, you say let x equal the, 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 x, the, 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 the. That occurrence of x in imposes a type on x, right? When, when you do all the unifications as you, as you go up. Uh, but you also get a type from the whole thing, from the da da x da da which would be the, the t0, right? And whatever delta 0 assigns to x, 
has to be unifiable with the, the set type of the definition. But why does it make it monomorphic? Sorry? You said it, you make the, the contract monomorphic. Inside the definition, yes. So let, okay, so let generalization happens after the definition, right? Because let x equals something, like let x equals uh, E0 in E. In this case, x is monomorphic in E0, but it's polymorphic in E. That's the, I mean, that, that, it, that, that's, that's what it's like in linear stuff. So, so that means in E0, when you see x, you want to impose a restriction on the type of x. But when you see x in E, it doesn't, it, it can't possibly, like, you know, okay, let me do it another way. If you say let x equal something in something, composition then it means exactly that whatever I write in the body, it can't possibly mean that the definition of x was wrong. Yeah. It can mean that the body is wrong because it uses x not as it was intended to be, but it can't mean that the definition of x was wrong because I can cut the definition of x, put it in a top level thing, and it would be well signed. Right? Yeah. And that's why you remove x after doing all the unification uh, to ensure that it agrees with itself. So after we know that this equation can be solved, that then we know that the recursion, if there was any, was correct or well timed. So after that, we can just drop the x completely, and that means when I use x in in e, it will have some type t in delta, and if I refresh this, any meta variable that remains in t will be refreshed, right? And there's not going to be anything else in delta to, to, to be refreshed at the same time, right? Because x is not in delta. Okay, so in the, in the example with the is just x not x, right? If, if, if x, suppose that x is less bound and polymorphic, right? It's, you say let x equals x in not x is just x. Right? That should type check, right? We, we, we all agree on that, I hope. So, but why does it type check? It type check because the typing of x in, in the body is gonna be a, right? And when you refresh a, you get b. When you refresh a again, you get c. So you get, you know, b equal to maybe a, and c equal to in, oh sorry, bool. You can solve these, right? There's no conflict here. You just, uh, you know, just make b equal to maybe a, just make c equal to bool, and you're done, right? Oh, yeah, I have an expression. Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so those are new, new meta variables applied consistently. It, it's, yeah. It's a substitution from type variables to type variables in a consistent way with, with fresh variables. So, so that's why this implement that polymorphism, and that's why, that, that, that's why this has anything to do with Hindemann, and were it not for this, it would be a very different type of term. So, okay, so now. Let's well, well, You don't have polymorphic lambdas. But I mean, lambdas are, like, even in Haskell, lambdas are not polymorphic. No, I know, but in, in this system. Oh, so, like, why are lambdas not polymorphic? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, well, that's easy. That's because, you know, here, if you say lambda x to x, e, x is added to gamma as a monomorphic variable because it's added with the, the monomorphic environment where x has type A. So if x, if it's a, given that x has type A, x has type A, yeah. and in this environment, 
we type check E. So what we get out of this is a typing which might or might not refer to X, right? If you have a lambda which uh, doesn't use, like a constant lambda, then X will not be present here. If you have a non-constant lambda, then X will be here, right? And that's why we have two cases. Either X is not in this data, in which case we just say, okay, P, in which case P1 can be anything. It can be a you know, constant function, doesn't uh, restrict its argument type, right? Which is a fresh type variable. It's the same, same variable as we use it. Or it don't restrict it, in which case, you know, we know what the type of the argument is because we get it out of the delta. Okay, so here we do monomorphic introduction yeah. to do the, to, to account for monomorphic recursion. Yeah. And then we drop it to yeah. account for generalization. Uh, yeah, here, because we use delta to, do yeah. for delta to do a double prime. So you know what polymorphism Sorry? What polymorphism Well, we don't have polymorphism. Yeah, well, well, it would be, uh, it would be a lambda, well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but what does it even what mean? Yeah, but but what could it be? Yeah, I mean I I, I don't know. Yeah, but what what would it mean to have polymorphic lambda? Like what would be the type of, of Yeah, so so, so hey, I guess okay, so she asked a question and, 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 and I agree with the, the, the question, whatever that means is if you, have, if you have a lambda abstraction, <coughs> at the end of the day, you have to say it's type as a function type, right? So it's going to be A to B for some A and B. So what would A be if you allow you know, the parameter, the X, to be used at different type? Yeah, they, they only I mean, in a rank to a higher rank yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but, but in, in, yeah. But in, in, in this, I mean, you, you, you can, like, it's not, so it's not that you don't want it, you can even, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but you could, you could de-sugar polymorphic less into a higher rank uh, lambda, right? Okay. Yes, so that's okay. one of the things. In, 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 in Haley Miller, lab needs to be part of the language, precisely because of lab generalization. So you can't do the old trick that you can do in untyped settings where you say a lab is a lambda applied on the definition. Yeah, we don't have time, right? time, time. yeah, well, because, we, yeah, because lambda is monomorphic and less is, is polymorphic, exactly. So, okay, so, so given all this, what, what does this all buy us? So to demonstrate that, I did a quick implementation of, of the, the, of this type checker, uh, which is on GitHub, and, and so this is the link. So I, I'm going to put the slides up, and then you can click on this link, and it takes you to the GitHub uh, page for it. Uh, so the implementation uh, has two parts. One is a linear, you know, old standard uh, linear, linear type checker. It tries to be as standard as it can be and it tries to share as much of its implementation with the compositional one because the idea is that you should be able to look at just two modules, see the difference and the rest is shared. So, uh, so this implements uh, type checking for the, this model language, the one where we only have, the, the one which also contains uh, pattern matching and uh, data constructors, right? Uh, it has a concrete syntax, it has a parser and a pretty printer. Uh, and uh, this is the point I guess where I should uh, thank Ricky for, for helping me out with it because the, 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 the front end was, was pretty much non existent uh, when I was done with the, the type checker part. So the fact that you can actually enter programs and you get things rather than what you did was, was done by error, which is a pretty important point of the demo experience, I guess. Uh, but for the concrete syntax, so indentation based, because I wanted it to look like Haskell, right? As, as like a 
subset of Haskell. Indentation based parsing, don't do it. It's a nightmare. It's, <laughs> it, it's horrible. Yes, here is it. So, uh, mag, uh, what's it called? Megaparsec? Is the new, yeah, Megaparsec and Trifecta both claim that they have some add ons which allow for that. Uh, there's a very old Parsec 2 uh, based, like something on top of Parsec 2, which claims to do indentation based parsing. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can try making your own, your own lexer, which adds these virtual tokens. Each of them will fail in different ways. <laughs> it's not worth it, <laughs> seriously. So what, I, so what we ended up doing is we use Haskell source extras to parse as a full Haskell program. And then we parse the AST by just failing on anything which is not you know, variable or application or lack or, or case. This is like, seriously, if none of this theoretical <laughs> thing matters to you, the one takeaway message is don't do indentation. <laughs> uh, as for the, the actual uh, representation of types and unification, uh, it uses the uh, unification FD, which is a package on, on, on Happy. Uh, it's, it's for this kind of things, but even, even that didn't exactly work out. So it's based on that, but I had to uh, use only half of it and print on the other half myself. Be uh, the big difference is that uh, I needed immediate writing of, of the meta variable. So the way that unification FD works is that when you unify two uh, terms, right, you get a term, and then later on when you try to flatten that by, by uh, like zonking, I guess, like, like taking out all the type variables, it might be that at that point you learn that, oh, but it actually it had a, a, an, an infinite type, like it had an upper uh, check violation when it was unified, right? So unify here, you get something which is not an error. And then later on, when you try to, to, to use that, it turns out, ah, but it was actually an error, you know, 10 functions before. So that, that's not good if, if you want to get type errors which are you know, very precise in the location and where you have a lot of context that you want to include in the, the error message. So, and the other thing is that my version has explicit zonking, so I don't know if you guys even know what zonking is. I don't know if that term is uh, used much outside GAC. Zonking is basically when you take uh, types which have uh, meta variables and then you replace each, each meta variable with whatever term it was actually solved for. So uh, if, you, if you imagine that the, you know, you know, you're doing your type checking, you're doing your unification, and each unification step will mean that some meta variable will need to be replaced with some other type, right? But if you represent the meta variables as references, so that you can easily be replaced them instead of having to do like a pure substitution, then you, know, you, you will keep these variables, like you, know, you have a reference everywhere. The, the reference will point to the right type, but you still have a reference, right? Because otherwise, the, the unification would need to be able to, to like you need a mutable type where the term itself, uh, I mean, the type itself is mutable, you know, not just the reference. Zonking is when you then follow all the references and whatever it ends up with, with, with basically. So, yeah, so the way this works is that there is a type class for type checker monads because the linear and the compositional type checker basically do the same thing. The difference is what they unify and what they do with the results. But how they unify it and what does it mean to unify two types, that's shared. So uh, a type checker monad is something where you can make up fresh type variables. You can, I mean, fresh meta type variables, right? Because you might not even have type variables in your system. In the composition, oh, actually, have you guys noticed that in the compositional type system, we don't really have type variables because we don't have uh, polymorphic, like we don't have quantifiers, right? We, we don't have for all types. We only have types, monomorphic types. They can just contain the things which we keep uh, replacing, we keep freshening. But you know, if, if you want to have classic polymorphic types, you can only do that at the top level where you have an empty 
phonological context because then you can just take the right hand side and just buy a, a you can pretend that there's a for all. But so so these are all for meta variables, right? So you get a fresh meta variable, you can read whatever the current solution of a meta variable is, you can replace that. So these are you know like immutable operations. And then when you want to get out of this mutable world, you can zonk as much as you can. So this, of course, still gives you something which can have meta variables because you might have unresolved uh, like variables which still don't point to anything else. We will, uh, I don't think we will see why. I, mean, I don't think we will get into that. But, but anyway, um, yeah. So um, the code, like I said, is mostly shared between the two type checkers. Uh, and it's done by a type which is parameterized over how you represent the context. So this would be the re basically the gamma. What is gamma, right? Which is different in the two cases because one, in one case you have polytypes, in the other case you have typings, not two variables. Uh, how do you represent? How do you represent errors? Uh, how do you represent source locations? And then the whole thing runs in ST, so we have the usual ST token that we have to carry around. Uh, which means that the type checker is both performant, because it uses ST rest, and pure on the, the other side. Um, yeah, so yeah, gamma is different, that's why it's not perfect. So what, what does this all give us? Well, let's go back to the original example, right? So. Um, you know, we don't have syntax sugar for tuples and everything, so it has to use muck pair instead of comma, but whatever, it's a small price to, to pay. Uh, oh, uh, maybe, no, I think that the, the point is here, yeah, okay. So if you try to type check this, it will tell you that uh, it cannot unify bool uh, with maybe a when unifying x. So the problem is in x is type, because bool and maybe a cannot be unified. So these would be the types which are, so you know, like if this would be list of bool to list of maybe a, right? This is still immutable, but this is the, the leaves that can't be unified. And then it tells you the actual types which can't be unified. And then this is, this is where the, the important part, this is the thing that JXC can't tell you, which is not pair not x has type bool to pair bool bool, right? Why, why bool? Well, because it's that one could be solved. So it's, you know, this one, because this would be A to pair bool A, but because this is a bool, we, we already know that this one is. So that one is solved already. Uh, is just X has type bool. So if, if, if you don't look at the last line, everything is fine. I want to apply a bool to something function on a bool. However, what is their view on X? What do they think of X? And look pair not X, thinks that x is a bool and is just x thinks that x is a maybe a and as we said here x is where the problem is so I think this is the correct error message for for this example and in general I think these are the, the error messages you want to see uh, as another example I mean this is just a this is a quick example of some functions that I implemented for, for testing. So you can see that the, you know, the types you get really agree with the, you know, with, with, with the linear type. These are all uh, various definitions of functions. Like these, you know, like one of these is done by a, a, a the fixed point combinator, the other is done by the same undefined equals undefined. One of them is undefined equals let x equals x in x. So you know, it, it tries all, all, all three uh, usual ways of, of, of doing bottom. And then the others are, well, the standard definitions. So just to give you an example, so, so for the, and uh, this is the thing running, so so this is the definition of, you know, maybe bool and pair. Of course, we need some infrastructure, right? Because we don't have a prelude, so we need to define what bool is, we need to define what maybe is and what pair is. And then we can say, okay, so not uh, is the lambda which takes b to 
a pattern matching is just is the lambda which takes m to a pattern matching and then we say make a pair I think in the yeah on the slide this is called smooth pair so I guess I should make that too um, yeah and then you know you well it's the same error as yet on the slide right so it tells you that um, Broken pair, not X, is multi pair bool bool, is just X is bool, which is A OK, but then here you have a, a problem. I mean, I, I, of course, I can also show you definitions from the working example, but again, it's completely standard. So that, that, that's the idea, right? That, that that it, you, know, you just write something to that effect of. So, yeah, okay. Uh, so that's basically it. So if you want a uh, lot more details, the two sources I can recommend. Uh, one is a paper from 2001, which is how I encountered this whole thing. Composition explanation of tensor and algorithm with debugging of typer. It um, defines this compositional type system, and then it shows how you can use you know, uh, well, this kind of results by putting a fancy Y on top of it, which would then allow you to, you know, like, okay, so it says it has a web pair, not X, but then you might want to understand more why it has this type and why X got <coughs> this type, so you can then focus on a sub-expression, like you can double click on just not x, and it would show you the typing of not x in the same format, and that's, and, and it works, right, because, again, because it's compositional, so it's, 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 it's meaningful information that you get by drilling down, right, uh, and the other one is by your truly, it's, uh, that was my master's thesis, that's how I got involved in this whole thing, so what I did was I took this system and I added <coughs> type classes to it, which is of course something I completely skipped on this one because the idea here was to have something small and self-contained. But type classes work, so you can add type classes to this system and then you get a very Haskell 98-like language and then you can tie that into a GHC, like you can take the front end of GHC and the back end of GHC and put this in the middle and then do this kind of type setting. And so the implementation itself is quite big rotten. It was done for 6.12, I think. Like I don't think you can compile that today. Uh, but if nothing else, you can just take the, you know, take the, the modern implementation, which is very small and self-contained, and maybe get some ideas out of that. And that's pretty much it. Yes, yeah, yeah, there, there, um, okay, um, so, okay, the details of that basically depend on how you implement unification. So, okay, if you wanted to make something which parallelizes by construction, you can just implement naive, pure substitution, because then you really don't have any, th then the only, uh, communication between the branches you have is when you're done with those branches. Yeah, yeah. And if you use references to, to represent um, the, the meta variables, which is what I did in this implementation, which is what GHC does, and which is what pretty much everyone does who wants to, you know, have some something which works very well in practice. Um, maybe? I, I would go with maybe. Um, yeah, because the problem then is that I don't know what, like, like, okay, I imagine, like, this is, okay, this is completely conjecture. I think it would work, but you might not get the right error message, like, you might not get the right points of where things go wrong. Although, yeah, I mean, you always, okay, well, 
you when you unify yeah because so mm. wouldn't it be weird because then you could unify two well, like let's say two deltas right but what's inside those deltas uh, is not just the view from below because it could also already contain the view from the side because it has been unified the, the meta variables already has been rewritten to account for things on the side so so it would okay so for well type programs it would not be an issue because then everything gets unified with everything anyway for not well type programs you would get a point where things don't unify but it might not be the point that you want Okay, and then the, the cop-out answer is that if you want to do that, you can always implement this using this way. If you get a typer, if you don't get a typer, you're done. You've done your parallel attack checking, then you're done. If you do get an error, you can run the whole thing sequentially. Yeah. yeah. And that has been my cop-out answer for performance question for five years now, because <laughs> in my defense, they asked how the performance of this compares to doing the Milner. I don't have any measurements. I don't have any any uh, what do you call it uh, asymptotic complexity <laughs> answers. But I can tell you that Hindemith can be slow, right? Theoretically, yeah. it can be exponential. Yeah. And again, just run it with Hindemith. If you type check, you're done. If you get an error, you can just run. You only then yeah. run this to get a good error material. Yeah. Which actually. Yeah, but what exactly would that mean? I mean, so in the other plus a compositional type, uh, a compositional type checker, the, the sum of the two is more complex than just the other with error messages, right? Sure, but you want the root error message, yeah. And the other Hindley Miller Type checker, I, I found that uh, okay. So for the linear type checker, adding existential is almost too easy. Like you can slip your your finger and, and suddenly you get existential, even if you don't want that. For com for the compositional type system, I think you could do existentials um, basically by having meta variables that you don't refresh I th I, and, and, and that you can't unify and something like that right? so I understand that for all or, or, or explicit for all it's also normally done this way that you basically assume that some price has to be uh, and only then no but explicit okay wait, wait. so the, you mean like scope type variables that's pure syntax. That that that's. No, no, but the, the thing I mean, if you have existentials, then the original version of for all or rank two polymorphism. Or but that's different. Type. Wait, wait, wait. That that's different. Yeah, it is different. So, but in in principle, it can be also simple. So, what was initially required was that you explicitly declare a polymorphic function. So that. Right. So, uh, okay. So, neither the implementation nor the, the rules here implement the type signatures, right? So, the, but that one you can do after you have done. Like, you can imagine that that's just the last step after you've done the inference, and for recursive or I mean for occurrences, you just use whatever is in the signature, right? So again, that's the, the, the standard technique. Uh, if you want to have higher rank type. And they're saying that it's enough if you can introduce them, like if you can introduce them explicitly yes. by annotating, uh, like yes. giving a type signature. Then, then, but then you have expression that is for all that is marked as something that you need to instantiate, and you add additional rules that right. basically tell us that this, I mean, this is very much already have that, right? Whenever that you actually use it, you need to instantiate it separately. 
Yeah, so that would be the like the, 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 this rule basically, right? Yes. Yeah. So. And unfortunately, so you don't do it, then you have a different problem than a fast forward. Okay, so again, it seems to me that that, that, that should be doable be by by not. So you either break the six cycle with explicit declaration, or you have full seven year unification. So but then it's I think it's possibly so publish uh, to run two and not for higher. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, wait, that's a different thing. So yeah, for higher so type inference for rank two. Uh, th like there's a paper you can find where they basically proven that it's possible, but it's no one has implemented it yet for, for any practical language. VHC implements rank two, if you, if you turn on rank two type, it's, it's the same as turning on rank n type. So you always have to give uh, yeah, so that, that that's signature. The thing. So if you, if you don't, don't go into sending unification, <coughs> So basically, the, ex the test signature breaks the cycle. Yeah, yeah, no, sure, sure. It's yeah. like GACC. Yeah. GACC breaks the problem because you explicitly give the signature for each variable, which in this case is not cycle. So you're saying that rank higher rank types should, should fit into this without saying? If you allow yourself to, you know, Sometimes you have environments, so you change the declaration, and you you have the yeah. But that's I mean, but, but that's that's very easy. That's that's like standard, right? Like even even if you don't have higher rank types, you might want to have type signatures, yeah. and, and then and then you don't want like you know one of the in the implementation one of the first things it does is it finds the strongly connected components of definitions because you know. Yeah, so then they should if you only do monomorphic recursion, that means then if everything which is in the same group will have to be monomorphic, like mutual monomorphic recursion. So that's and, and breaking that cycle is, is actually even easier than than building the the graph. I mean, so that, that's that's pretty much for free. The the real question is just because you do that, is that really enough to so what would be the typing of so basically if you think about it if you declare the type of a function of two variables a and b and you have a free declared signature then you basically say that a and b are not variables are constants with the type that is for all sets of initiation Yeah, but, yeah, but 
but that's but that's for the that's what you're saying how many millimeter you take this. Yes. Yes. Okay, but that's yeah, but that, that's yes, that's but standard. This but then here, right? What would be the more so what is the typing of G such that when you and you know, that's it would work, yeah, because G could simply have a typing which doesn't mention G in G one or C can layer man. Okay, but that gets tricky if you want to have yeah, B to probably A to B to B, right? Because then it's you have another type, basically, which is not uh, yeah. this one is not polymorphic order. So the then you want to include something about G in the typing, so yeah. but it would need to be something which only prescribes the Agreement on the B, but not the agreement on all variables. They don't have yeah, exactly. the concept of variable groups. Yeah, because they don't, have have I don't even have five variables. Right? So, yeah, so, okay, so the, then, then what you need is explicit for all E type to know whether alpha of E term in this case is the local type or not local. So you need to distinguish that before instantiation. But you, you may have a signature that is yeah. already perfectly instantiated. Yeah, yeah, the signature is not an yeah, issue. So the, the, the F has a type that is actually for all, if you think about it. Yeah, 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 of course. For all A to B to bool, which basically means that at every point where you yes, yes, but, but it, you remove for yes, all. Yes, but you're, you're key, which yeah, is, but that's yeah. okay, but that's what, yeah, yeah, that's what player and types are, and that's how you. Yeah, but the question is, how would they fit into this framework where you don't even have type variables, you only have local variables, and you have no way of like yeah, you have no way of, yeah, yeah, and you have no way of, of capturing the partial restrictions because you know the you either put G into the monomorphic so environment of G or you don't. Like that's basically the. the at least uh, as it is, that's the only degree of freedom, freedom you have. I know that there are type checkers that basically use this explicit for all and then they delay instantiation until beta is actually unified, which means that maybe there may be anomaly that your function is actually becomes rank two polymorphic or higher rank polymorphic in the, either though the basic algorithm is not because it delays it delays the issue. Yes, but that's I mean, but that's like crucial component of, of making this work. I mean, yeah, this one, yeah. Because you know, that that's what that, that's part of what makes this syntax directive and part of what makes it compositional. That that you do a fully determined. Instantiate. Well, it's not really an instantiation, it's really a, a, a just a refreshing here. The instantiation, the, the choice of the instantiation will simply happen when you unify uh, you know, the, the different view sites. But the, you know, but, but the, the occurrence itself doesn't, doesn't yield any, any, any decision on on how you would instantiate it. So because then you get back exactly to the to kind of, of non-local variables in this environment on the left. So you need to match that actually. So that, that's a big change in the output. I don't know, I would have to, I would have to say. So those, those that were instantiated from constructs side, you know, external constructs before, and those that are instantiated from Okay.